happen to catch the sunrise this morning, Elizabeth? I I did. It was beautiful. I you know I did because yeah. I caught it with you. <laughs> True. <laughs> but I appreciate the prompt. But it was a beautiful morning. It looked like a painting, as you said. Yes, it did. Um, and so I think that's just the kind of vibe. It's a it's a not a not a painting type of morning, but just a beautiful feeling heartwarming kind of day. Yeah, it was a nice drive here and, you know, uh, we'll be learning a little bit about exactly how they, uh, you know, collected all of these mm -hmm. items and exactly how much they collected. And then for the first time ever, we are taking, we're actually taking our show on the road. We are going mm -hmm. to be driving with the bus. We're going to be climbing in the bus with all of the goods and the students and driving over to the Salvation Army and delivering them. Yeah, I've and never done that before. I haven't either. And I love that whole concept of you know, from beginning to end, mm -hmm. be, being able to be a part of the full experience. Yeah, so. the, these students really see it out, yes. the whole process. Yes. They're dropping it off at, at the Salvation Army, seeing how much is in the pantry, and uh, really learning about how much it affects the people of the mm -hmm. Upper Peninsula, their their participation. I mean, it is, to, the Canathon is wrapping up. Correct. It's tomorrow's the last day to make your donations. So uh, it, we're kind of at the end of this one here. We are, we are. And I'm excited to uh, be able to take part in the mm -hmm. TV6 Canathon wrap up show. That's happening exactly a week from today, right here on Upper Michigan Today. So we'll be uh, having a ton of guests on the show. We'll be look looking at all of the efforts across the Upper Peninsula, the amount of donations, both you know in perish non perishable food items mm -hmm. and also uh, donations donations online because as we learned you know really through COVID and then over the course of the last few years those monetary donations really help these food pantries as well and so we've really tried to amp up that part of the Canathon and so I'm kind of excited to see how it all weighed out and then in turn how the pantries are able to use both the funds and the goods. I so. know yeah it's really great and so we're here at Market Senior High School and we're with one of the teachers that had a huge come on role over, come in on over. Uh, organizing we'll have you go right in all between of this. Us. Here we We're go. here with Carla McCutcheon. Carla, good to see you. Uh, so we have some students behind us. What what was your process of, of getting these students to participate in the TV6 Canathon and make donations? So the process is through an advisory program that mm -hmm. I lead, um, but I can only lead with these outstanding leaders behind me, and that's our student council. So I really want to feature them because their efforts year-round to make the school fun, um, to connect us to the community is a huge part of the advisory program. And I want our students to feel that, and we encourage donations over uh, the entire month of November, and today culminates it, and um, you know, just hardworking students that find ways to give. And uh, we ended up with about 2,000 items, um, which is an average of about two per student, which I think is one wonderful in a time when there's definitely a lot of food insecurity going on within our communities. And you know, it's always um, a great moment when you can give these experiences to students because I think sometimes we learn these types of lessons almost too late in life when we've, and we've missed out on opportunities to help our neighbors and to help our communities. So to be able to connect them early on, you know, how are you hoping that they take this then and uh, take it into their future? Well, just building empathy within the kids and getting that understanding, that jump. Um, you know, when it comes to, to my role here, being a PE teacher, I want them healthy, I want them happy, and I want them to realize the importance of, as they move into adulthood, to take part in community. Um, we live in a wonderful community here in Marquette, and all these things that we get to do happen through a lot of volunteers and a lot of support. And, you know, there's, there's just so much power in that, and, and I think it will translate through them, and as they move forward, they'll think about stepping forward and taking part to help feed a hungry neighbor, for instance, for, for this Canathon. And I always love a good, healthy competition. You all know that. Yeah. Uh, was it a, a pretty good competition? Did they get into it? How did you encourage them to really interact and get those uh, donations in? Well, we encouraged, what we do is because class sizes are different, so we count up the items, then we divide by the number of students to make it fair, because some classes have 10 and some kids, have, some sure. have 30. Mm -hmm. And um, not, to, not to brag, but being a competitive person <laughs> that I am, um, we were partnered with Mr. McFerrin and Mr. Thompson's class, um, and we did win the overall. But hey. when, it came to, when it comes to the other classes, it was just a great, it was close. And I just really appreciate every single advisory that came forth and brought in some items because every little bit helps. Yeah, and, there's, and this is the kind of competition that I really love because at the end of the day, there's no loser per se. No, I, Everyone's a winner and it's, it's just fun to be a part of. Right, the UP wins, 
the TV6 Canathon. Students wins. win. We're all the real winners. <laughs> the students are the real winners too because they're learning these valuable life lessons. They're learning about food insecurity because, I mean, like you mentioned, Carla, we live in a community where, for example, a lot of students are on either free or reduced lunch. A lot of students might not realize that maybe their classmate, the person sitting right next to them in the desk might be the one actually receiving that food. So these donations are really important. And like we mentioned, Elizabeth, the donations end tomorrow. So we have some information we can get up on the screen about making donations. So there are many, many drop off points uh, all throughout the Upper Peninsula. Of course, we cannot list them all, but you can find all of that information on TV6Canathon.com. You can also make a monetary do donation directly on that website as well. And super simple, you can text Canathon to 44321. Yeah, you can. <laughs> I don't know why or I got you can really excited check. about that. It's <laughs> because I remember the number. I know, I know. That's why. I'm so uh, techy. <laughs> that's, I, I love that for you, Elizabeth. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and you can also um, make a check payable to the United Way of Marquette County. I just have all this information. I know. I'm, I'm in my so head. impressed by everything Thank you're you. throwing out right now. You can mail it. You can drop it <laughs> off. So there are many ways to make a donation to the TV6 Should we Canathon. fill the bus? Is it time? Are you we, telling we me I'm talking too much? <laughs> No, I'm not. But perhaps we should get to filling the bus. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Sounds like a good idea. All right, let's fill the bus. How Wait, right now or should we take a break? I think it might be time for a break. Let's let's fill the bus. Okay. <laughs> let's fill the bus. All right, let's go. Let's fill the bus. All right, let's help, Tia. Okay. Oh, that's heavy. Oh. Come on, Robert. <laughs> Oh, it's kind of nice out it's today. It's really nice. I thought I was going to be so cold without my jacket. Me too. I thought I was jacket. Yeah. I'll, I'll actually just open it up on its own. All right. Well, we're going to keep filling up the bus with the students. And when we come back, we'll be on the bus, locked and loaded and ready to go. We'll be right back.